It's After Hours in the D, a time to unwind. Have a drink with friends. Enjoy the music, the arts. And see how hard it is to knock over a feather. Hungry? We'll satisfy your cravings. This is your city. Let's experience it. Live in the D, After Hours. Welcome to Live in the D After Dark. I'm Chuck Jason Tati, and we are at Historic Cliff Bells with several, well, several dozens of our closest yeah. friends and neighbors. to be right yeah. oh my gosh it is definitely a beautiful 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 place if you haven't seen it it's something that you definitely have to check out right and the music there's just an atmosphere in here it just makes you want to play like air <laughs> ham and organ yeah. it's hard on a round table but it, it <laughs> could work for somebody who knows what they're doing we're just glad to be out of the building after dark uh, having a little party here with you and with all of our friends in a place that just goes back what 80 years 80 right? years yeah i didn't know that did you uh, yeah i was actually in here about a decade decade ago and shot a short film. I was all in, in period dress, uh, like I was enlisted in the Air Force. What? It was, it was you know, what it was weird as it felt like it was back in time. That's yeah. what this place does to you. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Like we said, the place has been here for 80 years and it's definitely become one of the signature spots to check out in the D. And we'll tell you why. Take a look. Cliff Bells opened first in 1935. A gentleman named John Clifford Bell opened it. He was a notorious speakeasy operator in Detroit. The original club featured mechanically chilled beer, which was a relatively new innovation, air conditioning, which was new. Architecturally, uh, the, the place was unique and remains unique. Cliff was opposed to what he called the jarring lines of the Art Deco period and decided to design something that was a little warmer, a little softer. It's amazing that this place sat empty for so many years. What you see now it was really buried under a lot of layers of different renovations over the years. We did a pretty good job of uncovering what was original and saving what we could and restoring what we could. A very mixed clientele, young and old. We have live music at least six nights a week. We have the most active stage in the region. We serve dinner every night except for Monday, brunch on Sunday. We have a full bar, large bar, and have a series of our own cocktails and extensive wine list. It's a fun place. Welcome back to Live in the D After Hours. Uh, we want to thank co-owner Paul Howard for allowing us yeah. to leave the building and come out somewhere nice at night after hours. So thanks to him and everybody here at Cliff Bells. Absolutely. And this mural. Did you see? You it's pretty impressive. Yeah. And I hear that it has a story all its own, and we're going to post that story on our Live in the D Facebook page. Good stuff. By the way, when you come to Cliff Bells, make sure you order the drinks with the sticky ice cubes. You get a little extra. Oh, sticky oh, ice you do. cubes. Yeah, that, the bartender told me that one. Oh, okay, good, good to know. Good tip. Good Good to know. <laughs> so let's talk about a night out. Now sure. we know what drink to order and how to order it when we come Traverse here. Traverse City Bourbon, by the way. Traverse anyway, City Bourbon. Good. There you go. Now let's talk about when you get all zhuzhed up and ready to leave the house. Who do you get dressed for? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Ah, how you how doing? You doing? I see you, well, Chuck. No, it's more, no, is that a, a guy's question? Who are we dressing for? Sure, do, yeah. I, I know I'm you're dressing for you Susan you're Gatica. With, Susan Gatica, that's no right. question. And Taryn. Taryn, that's right. I'm, right. I'm absolutely, I'll come upstairs. I'm like, please let this be cool. Please let <laughs> She's like, oh, you look handsome, huh? <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, I'll say this. When I get dressed up and get ready to get to go out, I get dressed up for my girlfriends. I live for getting their reaction like, what? I didn't see that dress. When did you get that? You didn't tell me about that. We love it. Hair, the makeup, zhuzh, it's, it's really for the other women I'm with so we can But you know that other. is a little different. I mean, it really yeah. is because we're not going to sit here or no. even this close and go to, hey, you're zhuzhed. It looks good. It's, uh, <laughs> what do you do? How are your eyebrows? Oh, I just got them waxed. I mean, we don't... We don't do that. So you guys didn't like talk about jackets and no. pocket squares? Okay, all right. No, well, yeah, we actually we might in in sort of a joking way, right. like you know, did you, did you get a free bowl of soup with that coat? You yeah, know, that okay. kind of thing. But You're not I mean, going to wear that in front of people, are you? Exactly. All right. right. So what about girls' nights out and guys' nights out? Are there some ground rules for all this? Oh, you mean like if you were at Cliff Bell's? What, uh -huh. what if you're here with your girlfriends? So yes. We're just in from out of town. Mm -hmm. And a guy walks up to you and wants to buy you or maybe the whole group a drink. Is that appropriate? If a guy asks me, I won't accept. What about I'm the whole group? The whole group? That would be up to the other women I'm with. Oh. Uh, yeah. Because other then you're obligated. Come on, ladies, right? You know, if a guy buys you a drink at a bar, it's like I got to talk to you for the rest <laughs> of the night. I mean, I'm just going to keep it real. Like, I've got to 
want to talk to you. I want to talk with my girlfriends when I'm out. I want to, you know what I mean? Talk yeah. about how good we look. So I don't normally, I don't accept drinks when I go out. So what if someone tries to buy your lady a drink? That's what I want to no, know. No, better not. Oh, no. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> no. I got a guy. His name is me. Oh, right. and, uh, and Chucky is not having it, right? No, no. not I happening. Didn't, I didn't think uh, yeah. so. Is it okay for the missus to maybe dance with a gentleman who asks for her hand? While we're here? Even when we're not here? Even no way. We, no. 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 I wouldn't. I would think she should feel the same way about me too. Absolutely. I don't think it's just. I'm sure she does. Yeah. No. No. And I. But here's what I do know that's different, right? Okay. Is that ladies will go to the restroom? Yes. Here at Cliff Bells or anywhere else, and you will come out with three new friends you never had. Exactly. You get it. You get it. Exactly. Because you know what we were talking about? Right. Lipstick. Your outfit. You know what I mean? Just that's not just gonna what, happen. That's just what we do. Yeah, well, guys. Straight ahead. <laughs> yeah. At all times. At all, At all times. times. Yeah. At all so, times. So, no new romances happening in the bathroom. No. Uh, all right. No. So, what about dressing? What are you going to wear? Now, you are you you dress so well. Thank you. And you know how to zhuzh, as you say. Try zhuzh, to. Yeah. yeah. So, what, I mean, like I said, I try to keep it, you know, cute. Yeah. Girlfriend cute. You know, what my girlfriends might think is cute. Maybe the gentlemen out there don't. But I don't care because I didn't get dressed for you. So, yeah. that's a certain freedom you have. All right, all right, but I'm buying it. Okay. I feel with this music, there should be some major lean. Or I right. know. I'm trying to, find a, trying to find a spot that looks comfortable. Relax. Yeah. We're loving Cliff Bells right now, but there are all kinds of places that are new to check out in the D, and I found an area that maybe everyone hasn't heard of oh. yet. Yeah, take a look. Nestled between Grand River and Gratiot Avenue in downtown is a cool alleyway that looks like an outdoor art gallery. Welcome to the Belt. The murals that cover the walls lead you down a colorful corridor to two of the hottest night spots in the D. First up, the standby. Let's talk about what kind of cocktails that you guys have here? Sure. So I like to think that we're um, very much on like the forefront of advanced techniques in cocktails, um, but without kind of losing a very classic touch and very approachable touch. So you're going to make for us one yep. of your classic cocktails or what you're best known for? If there is one drink I think that like I exemplifies standby, it would be the snake in the grass. So okay. uh, we've had a lot of success with it. It's one of those great cocktails that's a riff on a classic with something modern added to it. Good? All delicious. right. Delicious. Savory. Mm -hmm. And I taste the gin. This is fabulous. I don't think I've ever had anything like this. I don't think there's many cocktails like this it. This is amazing. Mm. Just as long as you don't throw it back in my face, I know I did a good job. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I might throw it back. Yeah, do it. That's it not uncommon here. <laughs> And just a few steps away from the standby, the skip. If someone comes to hang out at the skip, what can they expect? Just a uh, really communal environment, uh, really easygoing, lighthearted. Uh, we have a bunch of frozen cocktails, 27 canned beers. So this is my first time here. What would you recommend for me? Definitely one of our frozen drinks. One of the most popular is uh, Irish coffee. What are you having? Are you going to drink one too? Uh, I'll take a gin and tonic. Okay. Fresh mango leaves. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. That definitely looks tropical. I get yeah, it. Right? I get it. Very nice. Cheers. Cheers. Well, the Belt is definitely a place that you, if you haven't checked it out, you definitely need to check it out. So I've got another little opportunity for us. So why not? I'm going to take you guys out for a drink. Oh, How about on. it? Oh, come on. This yeah, is why great. Not? A drink? Yeah. You're elevating your game. It was Shake Shack. Listen, now it's just milkshake. I'm always taking it up a notch. That's <laughs> yeah. how I do it. Going, That's how I do it. <laughs> going up in level. All right. Still ahead. After hours tonight, Motown, jazz, techno. We're talking music. Are you in the mood? I know that we certainly are. We have a special guest, Duke Fakir from the board. Tom yeah. Yeah. at the camera over there. <laughs> also, Thornetta Davis on the way. All right. Yes. It'd be great to see them. But first, we want to take a little tour of Detroit. We're talking about distilleries, feather bowling, and dancing. We'll do that with some of the coolest experiences in the D after the break. Ford News is brought to you in part by Kubota Tractor Corporation. Welcome back to 
to Live in the D After Hours, and we're still hanging out here at Cliff Bell's having a really good time, man. Yeah, and Chuck's oh, case, a really, really good time. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's smooth. <laughs> Thank you, Bucky. It's good to have friends working at the bar. Yeah. It's good to have How did I get back? I don't know. <laughs> That's great. You know, uh, Live in the D After Dark is celebrating not only Cliff Bells, but all the cool places around in the D that you can experience. We set out to find some of those experiences, and they're cool. Check it out. First stop, the Caju Cafe, famous for Belgian beer, bowls of mussels, and kind of a bowling game of sorts involving a feather. This is the Caju Cafe, located at 4300 Caju. You can stop in any night for great entertainment, fantastic food, and feather bowling. Caju Cafe is one of the most unique bars in all Detroit. They have a great selection of beer, and it's just super fun people, very nice staff and affordable. It's a great place to come anytime. Great food, they have the best muscles in town, the original feather bowling and great people. In Midtown, you might be surprised at what's happening at the DIA. The Detroit Institute of Arts is located at 5200 Woodward Avenue and it is really the go-to place after dark. Every Friday night, we're open until 10 p.m. We have special activities for families, for adults, for people who just come in on their own. We have drawing in the galleries and we provide all the materials. We always have live music. We have two restaurants where you can eat. It's really a whole different atmosphere when you come on a Friday night. Then there's Burt's Marketplace over in the Eastern Market District. Burt's is a go-to place because you meet people and it's a lot of fun. It sure is. Every Friday we do ballroom classes down here from 4 o'clock to 10 o'clock. You can come down, get your exercise in, have fun. This place has history, it's got a great vibe, it's got great music. If you want to learn jazz, this is where you come. This is where you start your career, here at Bird's Place. Bird is Detroit after hours. And who would have thought musicians would be trying to set a new Guinness World Record for a continuous concert in one of the sheds at Eastern Market? Shed 5 at Eastern Market is the place to be after hours. It's the Guinness World Record for the longest continuous concert by multiple artists. And in Corktown, the perfect nightcap. We're at 2 James Spirits in Corktown, first licensed distillery in Detroit since Prohibition. It's really unique just as far as like, this is kind of like one of the first distilleries that I've ever been to. People are great, the ambiance is great, the, the feng shui is great. It's such a, it's a great place to be after a long work week. As you can see, there are so many great things that we can all be checking out in the D after dark. On the menu? On the menu too? What is on the menu? <laughs> Turtle soup? Yes, please. Duck confit. Who wants truffle fries? Me! Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You can never go wrong. I know you can, yeah, for 300, you can never go wrong with truffle fries. But one thing we definitely can't ignore in the D is our incredible, historic, amazing music scene. Right, everyone? Yeah. Yes. Well, Bobby, welcome to our live and local team here tonight. Uh, Thornetta Davis and Duke Fakir. Let's hear it for them. Yes. Hey. Good to see you both. Good to see you. Yeah, so glad to be here. Yeah, yeah we're now, good. Now you're talking about the music was the most to me. Back in the 60s, late 50s, Detroit was all music. Yeah, yes. Every neighborhood had its own bar, a place like this, where you had a rhythm section playing with a horn, group would be singing. We worked all over town back then. Wow. It was just wonderful. It was a lot of fun. And this is what Detroit was about back then. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. that feeling comes through, like, Thornetta, your song, uh, going to be all right. I believe, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be all right. Yes. But actually, having Duke here is an influence, his group, and Motown music itself was a big influence to me when I was growing up. So but you know, you have to have been there to understand just how important music was at that time. Mm -hmm. Back then, Detroit, Detroit has listened to all kind of music. Mm -hmm. uh, great harmony music, not just by groups, but by anybody. There's a great music period. Yeah. That jazz things. Uh, you, you could hang out at night at different clubs, which they had clubs in every part of the city, just like this. But at night after two o'clock uh, at the West End, you go have jam sessions wow. and hear great jazz. You know, people like Charlie Parker. Wow. They were all yeah. wow. Yeah. And so it, they were all a great influence on, on, on the music here in Detroit. 
Uh, so we, had, we had great teachers. Well, well and talk about a teacher. I mean, yes. you're thinking about standing in the shadow of giants. That's, That's what exactly. happens, right? But talk about the music scene today. And today, how does that relate back to how you, you know, you went, even when you see Duke? Well, I think here, now we have musicians that are working musicians here in the city. Mm -hmm. And just to keep the music alive here, people thought that when Motown, the label went away, that the music scene stopped. And, and it kept flourishing. It kept growing. And people do make a living here, gigging around town in the little clubs mm -hmm. like Cliff Bells, you know. And thank God for music, for places like Cliff Bells that keep the music alive here. Yeah. So I've been very fortunate in the last 30 years to make a living. You know, Detroit is a music center still. Yeah. And, and it really starts with gospel here. Mm -hmm. We have a gospel congregation here that is probably bigger than any other mm -hmm. city. Yes. And that's where most of us come from. Mm -hmm. uh, All that talent on the Motown label found in the churches. That's right. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. exactly what it is. Yeah, when, we were, when we were off camera, you said that in your family, you're not even the best singer. Oh, I'm no, no one near the best singer. I got wow. two sisters that the one of them sang as good as Aretha, but they all stayed in the church. Yeah. I, wow. I followed the dollar. <laughs> yeah. How's that working for you? It's okay, right? Not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm working on what he's doing right now. <laughs> well, speaking of which, you gigging at Cliff Bells, who mm -hmm. also shot a video here, right, Darnetta? Yes, right. Well, actually, the, the commercial for a certain uh, lawyer was shot right here. Mike Morris. Yeah. <laughs> did I say that? Okay. Yeah. Mike Morris yeah. was shot here. And I also did my music, actual music video for the song, was shot at the Dirty Dog. Some of it was shot at the Dirty Dog and around the city. So, yeah, we've been... The doing scene things. is still vibrant. Yes, very vibrant. Oh, it really is. I mean, I don't go out much like I used to. I used to be out every night. Because back then, they watched those movies. You smoke, watch people smoking cigarettes, sit at the bar, and, and dress yeah. up. Mm -hmm. That's the way I started out. Just like that bar. I was at home when I was sitting at the bar before y'all dragged me over here. Well, it's good, to dream, it's, good to dream, it's good to dream about the future again for yes. what's happening and losing in the D. Huh? Good. Yes. good to see you both. You so, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, what can I get you? Why can you strip steak? Rare? I like their mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese for everyone. Thank I'm you. with that. Mm -hmm. Besides the music, Detroit is also a new hotspot for something else, food. Restaurants are popping up everywhere in the city. From lunch to dinner, we're taking you to some of the best places that will satisfy any craving in the D. Elliot. Welcome back to Live in the D After Hours. We're at Cliff Bell's. That's right, hanging out and having a really good time. Yeah. I cannot wait to get into one of these plates of gourmet <laughs> food. And speaking of, our Michelle Oliver, our resident foodie, takes us on a tour of the D to satisfy any craving. Looking for a fun night out? Consider heading to Vicente's Cuban Cuisine, located in the heart of downtown Detroit. Here, they've got a mix of Cuban and Spanish food, like this delicious paella. And after you eat, you can dance the night away. On Friday and Saturday nights, they have salsa dancing lessons beginning at 10 p.m. a date night and want to go somewhere romantic and historic? Try the Whitney. This gorgeous midtown restaurant was originally a house built by lumber tycoon David Whitney in the 1890s. Now they're dishing up fine dining food that will fill you up, like this beef wellington. If a deli's more your style, check out Mudgies in Corktown. This neighborhood hotspot is known for their charity work, adopting the park next door. And they're known for their long list of sandwiches, which have some interesting names. The Show Nuff, my grandmother used to walk around the restaurant all the time. If you ever asked her for anything, she'd say, Show Nuff. They also have a dinner menu and drinks. A local favorite that's been around for over 60 years is Scotty Simpson's Fish and Chips. Founded in Northwest Detroit, this diner has a 1950s charm, complete with an old-fashioned jukebox. 
Harry, the owner, has been behind the counter serving up their famous fish and chips since he started working here in his teens. Their fans claim it's still the greatest fish and chips in town. You'll first spot this place by the beautiful mural on the outside. This is El Asador. And believe it or not, this authentic Mexican restaurant is said to have the best steak in town. Chef Luis Garza is introducing people to traditional Mexican cuisine they may not expect. You'll have to try this Southwest Detroit gem for yourself. Now all of those places look great, and of course here at Cliff Bell's, true to Detroit form, we've gotten a beautiful spread of food out here, yeah, right, Chef you. Joe? Thank, thank you very much. Thank here. You. Chef, well, let's start right here, because this is closest to me and what I'm probably going <laughs> to have when we're done. What is that right okay, there? Okay, this is a pork tenderloin. It's a Durak pork. It's on uh, uh, bok choy that's seared with a smoked dashi broth and a pomegranate gel. All right, we'll put that aside for me. All right. <laughs> uh, the next plate here is our Puente Buff. It's uh, tenderloin tips. They're seared, generally served rare. It's on a egg yolk with uh, tarragon and smoked salt, uh, pickled red onions, uh, sumac, and charred lemon. This next one here is, uh, is our burrata. Uh, burrata is quite popular around here nowadays. It's a mozzarella stuffed with more mozzarella. It's got uh, pesto and uh, charred lemons. Right here is our Indian Brook Farms trout. Uh, this is raised in Michigan, just outside of Jackson, sitting on a bed of fresh uh, vegetables, spring vegetables. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. It's, it's pretty nice. It's the best trout you can possibly get in this state. And finally over here is our duck duo. We call it the dry-aged duck. Uh, it's a duck breast, uh, seared mid-rare, crispy skin, uh, duck confit, which is the leg cooked in its own fat, sitting on top of a savo mm. savoy cabbage stuffed with farro ri risotto with dried cherries and chestnuts and a blackberry gastrique. And real that quick before we say goodbye, this is the Cliff Bell, right? Yes, Name it is. Steak drink? Yes, it is. Yeah. What's in that? What's oh. in that? Oh, vodka, vodka and grapefruit, grapefruit juice and, and, and all kinds of all secret kinds of ingredients. Of Something that looks really good. Well, okay, you I go. Mean, you should try it Why don't you say it? goodbye? I'm going to look at the duck. I'm just okay, looking. Okay, I'll keep this right uh -huh. here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for Live in the D After Hours. You can catch me, Chuck, and Jason right Right here on Local 4 at 10 a.m. Monday through Friday. Have a great evening, you guys. Prime time. I'm definitely taking this.